Welcome to the Selective Start method. I'm excited to share it with you. So you may be wondering, what is Selective Start? Is it right for me? It's for anyone who, if you're like me, you're a little impatient about getting to paint the good stuff, make the powerful brush strokes, like you just want to eat dessert first. Selective Start is about going from the parts to the whole. It's selected because you select a point to start, complete it, then select an adjoining part, complete it, and this repeats until the fully finished beautiful painting is staring back at you. If you can learn to see the shapes along with their colors and values that make up a feature and then paint them in the correct spot, you can do Selective Start. Okay, let me take you through my steps. The first thing I do is get my reference image ready. You can do this in Photoshop, but you can also do it manually. Divide your reference image into quarters. Set your zoom so your head is the same size on your screen as you want it to be on your canvas. Use a proportion tool and a ruler on your canvas to determine the size of the face. Then hold your proportion tool on the computer monitor to see if you have the head the correct size. This image is too small. So we're gonna zoom out and then now it fits perfectly. We want a seven and a half inch tall head. No Photoshop, no problem. Just print out your image with the head the correct size and we can put it into a clear sleeve and then draw grid lines on top of that. Lay it on your canvas just to make sure that it fits and it looks the same size that you want in your portrait. Then I like to divide my canvas into quarters with lightly drawn grid lines. Usually an erasable colored pencil is what I use. The image is ready, the canvas is prepped, now we have to mix our palette. I like to have my palette completely mixed before I start painting when I'm doing Selective Start. However, while you're painting, just plan to be mixing new colors as needed along the way. Okay, palette's mixed, let's paint! To begin, decide on a starting point. We'll be using our grid lines to help us find the position. Then use your grid lines to continue finding the points on the feature that you're painting. We're working on a pupil of the right eye at this point. And then you're going to continue measuring with one-to-one -one measuring using your proportion tool. So we're marking the width of the pupil from our vertical grid line here, and then we're checking to see that it's correct. Once you have a concrete starting point, you just wanna paint out from there and keep checking the measurements against your computer screen. They're gonna be exactly the same on the computer screen as what you see on your canvas. And you wanna paint in detail from the start. That's the beauty of Selective Start, getting right to the juicy points. Whatever feature you're working on, you want to look at it as if it's made of little mosaic tiles that are of different color and different value. After you've painted an area, go ahead and check the measurements again, and you want to check it from different points, different grid lines. If anything's not in the correct spot, make sure you fix it before you move on. So I'm moving from the right to the left in this eye, and I'm not sure how far to go before I see the pink there. So I'm gonna measure with the proportion tool so I know where to paint the pink. I'm gonna check the width of the eye again from the vertical grid line. So when I'm first beginning a painting, I go very slowly. Uh, I check my measurements quite often because everything that I'm gonna be doing from this point moving forward is going to be based off of the position of this feature, so it must be correct. When something's wrong, make sure you fix it right away. So we just saw that that lower lash line was a little bit too far down. We fixed it, we measured it again, and now we know it's correct. I like to set up my uh, canvas with my palette on the right side because I'm right-handed and then my computer screen is very close there on the left and I usually work across towards the next eye when I start with an eye but you don't have to you could go down right into the cheek and the nose or you could go up into the forehead so I'm measuring against the grid lines to find my second feature so we were just measuring how high up from the horizontal grid line and we measured how far out from the vertical grid line we're gonna continue painting that left eye, checking our measurements as we go. We're looking at angles, and we're just making sure that each brush mark is put in the correct spot with the correct value. If not, we're gonna go right back in and correct it. 
I'm not super concerned with color at this point. I'm more concerned with getting the correct value laid down. And they're just checking the eye position against the initial eye and everything's lining up good. The angle's good. So we're going to keep working. I can't emphasize enough to really take your time, put your brush strokes down slowly, check things. I even sped up a little bit the demonstration here. Otherwise we'd be painting for like six hours just to get the first two eyes and you would be seriously bored. Remember, we're completing the feature that we're working on to its fullest detailed level, so that does take time. And eyebrow placement is very important to really catch the resemblance and likeness of your subject. The eyebrows, they must be uh, in the correct place. So with the selective start method, you just continue repeating that process until you've worked your way down and across the face and you're, you've completed uh, one feature and then you move to the next feature and just keep measuring and then moving to the next one. It's really simple, the process, just uh, complete a feature and then paint the adjoining feature and keep doing that, but checking your measurements along the way. And each time I'm laying down a brush stroke, I'm thinking about how can I make this brush stroke interesting or creative? And that might even be by using a different shaped brush, maybe one that's a little bigger than what I think I need or one that has bristles that are splayed out or uh, just get creative in your thinking with uh, mark making. <laughs> I have an artist friend of mine and she wanted to have some unusual marks in her painting. And seriously, she went into her backyard and she saw that she had a dead squirrel. She actually cut his tail off and used it to paint with. She is uh, far braver than I could ever be. I don't think I could have gone that far, but I gotta say the squirrel tail really did make some nice marks. So looking at our little reference of the mouth here, can you see the different uh, shaped colorful tiles that make up the mouth and the chin here? And can you see how we're just laying down a brush stroke that's not much longer than the actual bristles of the brush itself? and leaving it. We're not doing any blending. Every time you lay down a brush stroke with selective start, the first brush stroke goes down and then the next one either lies beside it, it overlaps it slightly, and there's no blending them together. You just keep laying down short, succinct brush strokes until an area is covered. Now don't worry, just because you finished a feature and moved on, it doesn't mean that you can't go back later and adjust it or refine an area. I, I often do that. So you can complete the face and then always go back over it. So to help soften up some of my edges, I like to lightly dust over my portrait with a fan brush. I really find these useful and you can brush over an area and then paint detail back into it. You don't have to leave it too soft and fuzzy. That's not a great look. And then I also like to use rounds. That's one of my favorite brushes. I usually use uh, zeros, twos, fours. I stay pretty small. And then flats, I use those for the larger areas like the hair and the backgrounds. But my secret weapon brush is the comber. It's like little combs and it makes such a beautiful mark. And when you're just laying down uh, bits of brush strokes, they kind of um, lace together and it just makes a beautiful effect. I don't use mediums a lot. I try to avoid them. Uh, mostly I am painting with just oil paint straight out of the tube, but I will use walnut oil on occasion. So let me just review. I started with the right eye, moved across the face to the left eye. Then I came down, did the cheeks, painted the nose. Then we moved into the mouth and chin. And then we came back up to the forehead. The eyebrows always make a good stopping point uh, if you're going to save the forehead for later. Uh, it's nice when you stop painting an area to leave a little bit of flesh color around a feature so that when you're painting back into it, it kind of blends together more gently and it's not leaving a really hard line. Good portraits have a variety of edges and line throughout them. You want soft edges, hard edges, 
and in between edges and having the correct uh, combination of those can really make your portrait look masterful. So with this portrait, I was really looking to emphasize the vocal point, the area that where I want the viewer to really um, look at first or notice the most, and that would be the right eye. And in order for me to have that happen, I needed to have the most contrast and the highest degree of detail in the right eye, the vocal point. And so what that means is that anything that's further away from that vocal point is going to start to get blurrier and softer. So I made sure to paint the left side of the face and then a little bit further down like towards the mouth with soft, soft edges. So you can choose to follow the selective start method with any portrait that you want to paint. You just have your reference material in front of you, pick a part or a feature to start with, measure and get that um, starting point solidified on your canvas and then continue through the steps until you complete that feature then move to an adjoining feature and you continue that same process repeating it over and over until you've painted the entire face so once you have the entire face down you want to double check your measurements make any refinements and finishing details and at the end, you're going to have a beautiful, expressive portrait.